Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. As mentioned in the previous video, this one is going to be my very biased, flavored, very subjective opinion about why I like to use editors like Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code instead of full-blown IDEs like IntelliJ or Visual Studio. Now, to be clear, I use both, but I like to use only one of them. Before we get into this rabbit hole, I would like to ask you for two things. Firstly, please watch my previous video to understand where my biases come from. And secondly, I'm not trying to start a war here. I'm not going to tell you what to do and I'm not going to tell you which editor or IDE to use. In fact, my critique applies to A, both editors and IDEs and B, to no editor or IDE in particular, but rather to the conceptual idea of our tooling these days. If you find parts of this video valuable, great. If not, well, I'm sorry for how wasted your time. It was really not my intention. And one last thing before we start, this video is going to turn into a little rant towards the end, which is not something that I usually do. In fact, this is the first time, but I strongly believe that in this case, it is actually necessary. And so, since you're still here, let's get right to it. Most of the times in life, when you're presented with new information, it's nothing groundbreaking. But occasionally, you stumble over a book or a blog or a video or an idea that touches you. It touches you in such a way that it either changes your worldview quite drastically, or it reinforces the view that was already there about something else that you already knew but you didn't really give much thought to, and so it's like a wake-up call for you. In the year 2012, a YouTube video came out that made me realize something about editors and IDEs. And believe it or not, I have not looked at IDEs the same ever again. It really was a life-altering experience, even though the information was nothing groundbreaking. It was just something that I didn't give much thought before I watched that video. Back then, YouTube was not as big as it is now, and also the Scala community was at its infancy. And so this video that I'm referring to has less than 4,000 views and only 32 likes. But there are no dislikes, so I'm not crazy. This video is called Enzyme, what it is and why we care, and it was presented at the Northeast Scala Symposium in 2012 by Daniel Spivak, who to this day remains a very active member of the Scala community and simply put, a very brilliant and entertaining speaker. And the link is going to be down in the description if you're interested. Some things that I will talk about today are based on that video, starting with its core idea that IDEs happen to be bad editors. I honestly don't know why though. Even though IDEs offer some insanely useful features, an editor seems to be just one of them. And yes, I believe that from the perspective of an IDE, the editor is just one of the features and for some reason, all the features are treated equally. Now, this is problematic and deeply concerning because even though we developers spend 90% of our time reading instead of writing code, code is still text. And so what I want is the best text manipulation tool available. All the other features that an IDE offers are fine and dandy, but they're also secondary. And for some reason, IDEs have this in reverse, and I sincerely have no idea why. This shouldn't be a choice. When the hell did the good text editing experience become the price that you have to pay for AST traversals? That's what an IDE really is, isn't it? If CRUD applications are merely wrappers around databases, then IDEs are merely wrappers around ASTs, which also explains why the front-end world is not built on IDEs. It's changing now due to technologies like Elm, TypeScript, and hey, even Scala.js. But before that, the front-end developers weren't using any IDEs at all. The front-end world was dominated by simple editors like Brackets, Sublime Text, Atom, Visual Studio Code, you know, even Vim and Emacs. Why? Because without an AST, an IDE becomes a useless memory-eating beast. Oh, and by the way, in case of front-end at least, debugging can be done inside of the browser, which is not ideal, but hey, I rarely use a debugger anyway, and just as a reminder, this video is about my experience, so your mileage may vary for obvious reasons. By the way, if you're starting to wonder if I'm crazy at this point and you can't imagine your life without an IDE, watch my previous video in which I show all the IDEs and editors that I have used. Because chances are that you just haven't seen a really great editor, and I'm not judging. I understand, sometimes it just happens that you grow up with IDEs and you cannot imagine your life without them. But aren't you at least a little bit curious? Aren't you at least a little bit concerned that you might be missing out on something? Do yourself a favor and Google for something like sublime tips and tricks. You don't have to like it, it might not be your cup of tea. Just open your mind a little bit. Oh, and by the way, I'm using Sublime Text just as an example because I'm most familiar with it. There is a plethora of good editors and uh, here are a few of them. There's Vim, there's Emacs, there's Sublime, there's Brackets, there's uh, Atom, there's Visual Studio Code. Just try some of them. Google, Google for a tutorial about any of them. 
All right, let's slowly transition to the next point, which is the following. If IDEs are such bad editors, then why do we use them? Well, they offer a lot of useful features, like showing types, auto-completion, jumping to definitions, debuggers, code folding, refactoring, and many, many others. And I'm not going to downplay these features. They're all very, very useful. But recently, I had this very, very interesting idea. And by the way, it also applies to editors as well. And here it is. The more powerful our tooling becomes, the less powerful our code becomes. Think about it. Here's an example. Scala has local type inference and also it allows you to nest definitions like there's no tomorrow. So here's an example. You have 10 levels of nested definitions and there are no types whatsoever. So what's the big deal if IntelliJ can just jump in there and show you all of the types and mark the scopes in such a way that they're distinguishable for each other for, for the human eye. And so the better your IDE gets, the less tempted will you be to write good code that speaks for itself. Now again, the same rule can be applied to editors. For example, if I'm using an editor, I will be less likely to rename a variable that it used in many places because the renaming inside of an editor base is based on the uh, syntactic heuristic and uh, not on what the compiler actually deems as valid, which is just a fancy way of saying search and replace. Let's raise the stakes a little bit. The more powerful our tooling becomes, the less powerful we become. You heard this good old saying, a fool with a tool is still a fool. Has this ever happened to you? And be honest, you type the first letter of a three letter variable name, and then you wait for a few seconds for the IDE to auto complete it. And then you also spend some time to select it. Three letters, be honest. All right, I don't wanna dwell on this point, so let's move on to the next one, which is me constantly feeling interrupted by IDEs. And to be fair, this applies to the editors as well, but not to such an extent. Has this ever happened to you? You open your project in a big ass IDE like IntelliJ, and it just goes off into doing something for five freaking minutes. Like, like seriously, what is it doing except for hogging all of my memory? And then notifications start to appear from all over the place. There is an update to a plugin, there's a new fancy shortcut, and I swear to God, one day we're gonna see ads in our IDEs. After a while, you finally start typing, and with your first keystroke, your laptop fan is starting to sound like a freaking combat jet that is about to take off. And also, I just made one keystroke, and 20 things on my UI have changed. Now, again, this also applies to editors, but not to such an extent. The file that I touched is a few subfolders deep, and so all of the folders in the tree have a symbol next to it telling me that there is a change somewhere deep inside of that tree. Now, the files in my sidebar are starting to look like a freaking rainbow, and also the buffer, you know, the tab that I have open is marked as dirty because I made this one keystroke. The single letter that I just typed is underlined with a red squiggly line, and also some number somewhere went up, presumably it tells me about the number of errors that I have. After saving the file, my status bar shows me the entire path of the file that I saved. And also because I saved it, its size changed, so some number somewhere else in the status bar also changed. I keep typing and hit the dot, and another pop-up jumps straight into my face. Now, auto-completion is super, super useful, but it hides the code around it and completely interrupts my entire thought pattern. And even if I type everything correctly, the pop-up still stays there until I press escape or the auto-completion key, which is usually tab or control space. Seriously. Think about it, how many times per day are you pressing escape just to get rid of some pop-up? Answer me this, how is a pop-up appearing out of nowhere different from a notification on your phone? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Now I know that all of this is subjective and it might not bother you as much as it bothers me or maybe just one of those things that you never paid attention to and now that you have noticed it, you can't stop unnoticing it, so I guess I'm sorry for bringing it up. And also I'm sorry for not being done with my rant, so let's continue, shall we? Who thought that hovering over something with my mouse cursor should be powerful enough to trigger yet another annoying pop-up? And also, even worse, who thought that me pressing escape should not be enough to get rid of this pop-up just because my cursor happens to be still over this pop-up? I'm looking at you, VS Code. Now, here's the thing, and this is probably the most important piece of information that you should get from this video. I am a full stack developer, but even though I spent most of my professional life in the backend, front end, and in particular user experience, piqued my interest at some point. And so I read a few blogs about UX, and I even started to read a book about it at some point. Now, I'm telling you this because everything that I read so far hammers on this very, very important fundamental concept of user experience. And it has nothing to do with the sizes of buttons or the colors that you choose. This is the principle of the feeling of being in control. 
When designing a human-facing interface, make the user feel like they're in control. They don't even have to be in control, they just have to feel like it. Which, by the way, contradicts everything that we the programmers want. We like programming, and programming is about automation. We like our tools to be very, very powerful. We want the things to happen behind the scenes. We want our tool to be smart. We want to be lazy and let the tool to do everything for us. But this creates a horrifying, and I really mean horrifying, user experience. An IDE should not be a toy that you just have fun programming. It is a tool that I might have even paid for. It should assist me doing my job instead of going on an ego trip. It should do exactly what I want it to do and exactly when I want it to do it. Seriously, how many times are you wondering what exactly your ID is doing behind your back? Because sometimes it feels like it's mining Bitcoin. And what bothers me the most is that most of these things are usually so, so easily fixed. Just let me hold control before you show me the pop-up simply because my cursor happened to be over some text. Don't trigger a pop-up in my face simply because I reached a dot. Trigger it on control space instead. Also, stop underlining everything while I type. I know it's broken. I'm literally in the middle of fixing it. Just show me how wrong I am once I save the file. And because everyone wants to be a unique flower, just put everything under a flag and let everyone configure everything to their own liking. Seriously, automatic triggering of a pop-up should not be sold as a feature. It should be comparable to a notification in your phone which steals your attention like everything else these days. Now, instead of triggering the pop-ups only when I want them, you could also have another idea for not using pop-ups at all. Lighttable had actually a very interesting idea about this to have a dedicated area for for this which is visible at all times so instead of having a pop-up you have this dedicated area now you don't have to go this far you can just put everything in the status bar you know show me the type in the status bar show me auto completion in the status bar and what's the difference the difference is that the status bar is always there so if i want i can look at it if i don't i'm not gonna look at it oh and by the way giving me more control means that you can finally stop guessing what i'm thinking about and therefore do less processing behind my back this should drastically improve the resource usage and performance characteristics and even my editing experience, which is freaking awesome. Seriously, the second your tool slows down my typing by injecting some expensive garbage semantic highlighting into my UI thread, I'm uninstalling it. It's probably for the code that I'm about to throw out anyway. Stop trying so hard. And so, all of these reasons, bad editing experience, the resources wasted on the features, which are awesome, but let's be honest, I can survive without, and the sheer lack of feeling of being in control is why I don't like using IDEs. By the way, notice that I haven't compared anything feature for feature. This is not what matters. The overall experience matters. You know, it's the little things, it's the look and feel, it's the speed. Oh, and one last thing. The more time you spend programming, the more languages will you learn. And the IDEs, even though they can be extended with other languages, they're fairly closed if you compare them to an editor. Extending a full-blown IDE like NetBeans, Eclipse, IntelliJ, or Visual Studio is not as straightforward as simply adding syntax highlighting to an editor like Sublime Text or Visual Studio Code or Vim. So now, instead of just learning a new language, you're also forced to learn a new IDE at the same time. And furthermore, even though I don't have any data to support this point, I mean, hell, this entire video was subjected anyway, I believe that tooling has been a major pain point in Scala for all of this time. And uh, this is one of the reasons, you know, maybe even the main reason why our community is not growing as fast as it could. All right, as mentioned in my previous video, I use Sublime Text most of the time and I find myself slowly transitioning to Visual Studio Code because of the wonderful tools like Metals. Even though Metals works for Sublime Text as well, it feels much nicer in Visual Studio Code. Now, am I happy with everything these two editors do? No, but they do a pretty good job staying out of my way. Do I miss some of the IDE features? Well, sometimes I do, but these days a new breed of tools is on the rise tools like Metals and Bloop, and in fact the next video is going to be me showing you how to install Metals on top of Sublime Text and Visual Studio Code, and so bolt on some of these IDE features and, you know, this way we're going to get some of the IDE features back to our amazing editors. For now, let me give you a few parting tips. Number one, don't use the tools that I use simply because I use them. In fact, I use Sublime Text for recording. Well, Sublime Text is my favorite editor, but still, I use it for recording mainly because it doesn't create any random pop-ups and so it ensures a very pleasant viewing experience. However, what you don't see that during the preparation of my videos, I might also use IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or hell, even Vim. So what you see is not what you get. Number two, if you're just starting out with programming and thus learning your very first language, whatever language it may be, your IDE should be a piece of paper and a pen not even a pencil. You should train your brain to understand that every symbol that you write matters. Afterwards, stare at your program for a little bit and try to find errors and fix them. And let me say this again, don't run to your computer just yet. Stare at your program for a little bit, 
try to find errors and fix them. Then use an editor, but without syntax highlighting. At this point, you probably still have errors in your program. This time you can fix them inside of your editor. Then you can run your program and then you can go back to the pen and paper and repeat the whole process. I know that all of this sounds very sadistic, but luckily you don't have to do this for a long time. A couple of days max. After this, you can switch to an editor full time, but still without syntax highlighting. And then after a few days more, you can switch to an editor with syntax highlighting. Number three, if you're starting a new job, you will most likely be faced with a non-trivial, pretty big project. The code will be far from perfect, there will be mountains of it, and the imposter syndrome will kick in and you will start questioning whether you made the right choice accepting the position. Just breathe. Welcome to the real world. The first thing you do is ignore everything I said in this video and install a big ass IDE, preferably the one that most of the people on your team are using, and listen to their advice when it comes to the setup. Swallow your pride and don't start doing your own thing simply because you're used to it. In the beginning, keep it simple. Their house, their rules. A little bit of obedience goes a long way. Respect is earned, so keep your head cool and don't act like you know everything better than everyone else and suggest to rewrite the entire code base because, quote unquote, no one understands it. We've all been there, don't make yourself look like a fool. Number four, after a year or so, once you finally got used to the project, you can start using both the IDE for milking the AST and your editor for those fun times where you actually get to write some code. Don't forget that 90% of the time is spent on reading code and only 10% writing it. So IDEs are useful contrary to everything that I said in this video. Number five, this is mostly a Scala channel, but since in the previous video I mentioned all the IDEs that I have used, I thought that it would be a good idea to tell you which IDE is my favorite one. And uh, my favorite one is Visual Studio with ReSharper. But again, the last time I used it was over like 10 years ago and back then I didn't know the things that I know now so uh, maybe these days I wouldn't like it that much either. One last thing that I would like to repeat is that it was not my intention to bash any IDs in particular. It was rather about the conceptual idea of our tooling, even though I might have used a bunch of B-roll specifically with IntelliJ alone. But I just want you to know that I don't hate it and also it's not personal. In fact, I know some of the people who work on this color plugin for IntelliJ, so I hope I didn't upset anyone. All right, that's all I got for you today. This was actually the first time that I made such a ranty video. I usually try to stay positive in my videos, but sometimes I believe it's really necessary. It's been Vlad, devinsideu.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you find my videos valuable, consider supporting me on Patreon, and most importantly, take care.